A few weeks ago, I posted a video reviewing the Inatech 9-in-1 USB-C hub. This was the first hub I've tested that provided a USB-C data port in addition to the now standard USB-C power delivery port you find in most USB-C hubs. Sadly, it seems like this Inatech hub is now discontinued and stocks are low, so I picked up two similar hubs based on recommendations in the comments, the Anker 7-in-1 and the Kingston Nucleum. Neither of these hubs provides the full range of ports in the Inatech, but they do both have the USB-C data port. There are trade-offs to each hub and neither performed as well overall as the Inatech, but let's dive in and see how well they stack up against each other. I've tested each hub as thoroughly as I can and I've included timestamps to the relevant sections in the description below. Both hubs provide the same seven ports, two USB-A ports, an HDMI port, a micro and a full-sized SD port, one USB-C PD power input, and one USB-C downstream data and power port. Unlike the Inatech 9-in-1, there's no VGA and there's no gigabit ethernet port. And actually none of these three hubs have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, which isn't a major issue for me. I'm using Bluetooth headphones, but might be a problem for your setup. Both hubs have a short captive USB-C cable to connect to the main device. Here I think the Anker is a winner. Its cable is noticeably longer at 21 centimeters versus the 15 centimeters of the Nucleum. This means that the Anker rests comfortably on the desk when plugged into my 11 inch iPad Pro and doesn't dangle quite so ridiculously when plugged into something like the Surface Pro 7. A lot of viewers have commented on these short captive cables. There is a reason why manufacturers opt to use a captive cable rather than allowing you to plug your own cable in. By using this short captive option, they have exact control over the voltage loss, something that is strictly accounted for in the USB specs. I'll put a link in the description below to a great article with more details on this. The Anker is specified at maximum 100 watts and the Kingston at 60 watts. 60 watts is enough for most laptops and tablets if you don't have a lot of external devices attached. For bigger laptops though, like the 16 inch MacBook Pro, if you're gonna attach some external devices, then the extra wattage up to 100 watts is definitely welcome. I tested both hubs with the exact same load attached, in this case, my MacBook Pro 16 inch, charging two tablets and powering an external drive. The Kingston Nucleum consistently delivered between 55 and 60 watts, and the Anker delivered just under 80 watts, which I suspect was pushing the limits of the 87 watt power supply I was using. For downstream power delivery over the USB-C data port, I tested again with my Raspberry Pi, and the Anker hub was fine. It was able to complete the stress test on a mildly overclocked Pi, no problems. The Nucleum, however, was throttled, and the Pi was not able to complete the test without having the clock speed throttled due to under voltage. So based on the better power delivery downstream on the USB-C port and the maximum 100 watt input, I think the Anker hub wins out here. So that's two nothing for the Anker so far. As we saw earlier, both hubs have micro and full sized SD card slots. The Anker website doesn't say whether their hub supports UHS-2 cards, whereas Kingston is clear that their hub does. In my tests, the Anker maxes out with write speeds around about 88 megabytes per second and read speeds just under 91 megabytes per second. The Nucleum, however, has write speeds around 178 megabytes per second and read speeds around 215 megabytes per second. The Nucleum is the clear winner here. I'm super impressed with this performance. This even outweighs the performance I get from my powered desktop hub that does support UHS-2. We're now 2-1 in favor of the Anker, but photographers will almost certainly be leaning towards the Nucleum given this extra performance on the SD card slots. To test out the performance of attaching drives over the USB-C ports, I use my SanDisk Xtreme SSD and the open source FIO utility. I plugged the hubs into my MacBook Pro 16 inch and the hubs were powered in these tests. Read and write speeds are pretty much the same for all the USB-C and USB-A ports across both hubs, somewhere in the region of 450 megabytes per second. The HDMI port on both hubs delivers 4K at 30 hertz and 2K at 60 hertz. I tested this with my MacBook Pro and with the Surface Pro, both worked as expected. I also tested with Samsung DeX, which was something a few viewers seemed to be interested in. Both hubs delivered full screen 4K, but needed to be powered to do so, at least with my Galaxy Tab S4. On my iPad Pro, 
Both hubs delivered some form of HDMI output, but it was weirdly cropped and nothing like the output from the Inertech hub, nor the output when using USB-C direct to connect to the monitor. This is a little disappointing, but I think we'll call this a draw. Based on my tests, both hubs work perfectly with the MacBook Pro 13 inch, the MacBook Pro 16 inch, and the Surface Pro 7. Support on my Galaxy Tab S4 with DeX was pretty good, HDMI works fine, the SD card slots work, and the USB-C data port works, but I was unable to get anything from the USB-A ports. I'm not quite sure why that was. I will note again that this configuration only worked when the hub was powered. Support for the iPad Pro is not too bad. All the USB ports and SD card slots work, work well, and work at the same time. It's possible with both hubs to have the Files app show five external storage devices at the same time and to move files between them. But the output from the HDMI port is weirdly cropped. This is super disappointing. The Inertech hub does not have this problem and it's not a problem I've seen when connecting directly to a USB-C monitor. From a compatibility standpoint, I think we'll call this a draw. At the time of filming, the Anchor was selling for $34.99 in the UK and $39.99 in the US. The Nucleon was selling for $35.49 in the UK and $49.99 in the US. I'm not really sure why the Nucleon is so much more expensive in the US when compared to the Anchor Hub. Maybe it can be found cheaper elsewhere, I don't know. So in summary, both of these hubs are solid devices and I certainly wouldn't suggest switching if you already have one. If you're buying one now though, I think the Anchor wins out. The longer captive cable makes this hub a little bit more practical and the higher power rating increases the size and number of devices you can work with. If you're trying to power a Raspberry Pi, as we've seen, it's not really practical on the Nucleum, especially if you've overclocked your Pi. So the Anchor is a definite winner there as well. And given the extra 10 bucks the Nucleum costs in the US, the Anchor is really hard to beat. I will say though, if you're a photographer, you might want to consider the Nucleum for the incredible SD read-write performance, but you've really got to want to do a lot of SD card data crunching to make that case. I still think if you can get hold of the Inertech 9-in-1 hub where you are, then it is definitely the best choice. It has the gigabit ethernet port, which I know I'll definitely miss. And on the iPad Pro at least, it has a much better HDMI output. I hope you found this video useful and I hope that you found it entertaining. If so, please hit like, please hit subscribe, and don't just hit subscribe, but hit the bell as well so you don't miss out on any future content. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.